Welcome to the West Virginia Attorney Podcast, where we talk about all things legal, where it be criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, car accidents, med mal, whatever you want to talk about within that realm, that's what we're going to talk about on this podcast. And this is geared towards clients when you want to find out information on what you need to know to choose a lawyer. Now, this is not legal advice. We do not have an attorney-client relationship. So this is just legal tips, the things you need to know when choosing a lawyer. So welcome. I look forward to talking to you. I look forward to you engaging as we go forward on this podcast. If you are listening to this episode of the West Virginia Injury Podcast, chances are you or someone you love have been injured in an accident. Typically, the most common injury case that we handle as a result comes to us as a result of a car accident, maybe as a result of someone who was not safely operating their vehicle, maybe as a result of someone not driving safely for the conditions. Let's say it's snowing or it's raining and they're driving too fast or they're not driving conducive for the conditions of the road, or they're driving too close to someone, or they're driving and they're texting, or they're driving and they're on their phone, or they're driving and they're otherwise distracted. Those are the types of injuries we currently see, we typically see in our office. Now, if you are injured in a car accident, it's very important. First, you make sure everyone is safe. You make sure everyone is in a safe location. If you need to call for medical assistance, call for medical assistance. If you need to call and make sure the police are available, call and make sure the police come and make sure they give a report. And your next call should be to an attorney, preferably an injury attorney who can understand your situation and make sure they can get you the compensation you deserve. Because odds are you're going to be injured and you can't go to work or you're going to miss out on school, or you're going to miss out on opportunities that you could have otherwise went to, but for that injury. Now, there are certain things that attorney needs to know. What type of insurance do you have? Also, we need to know what type of injuries do you have? What type of injuries resulted from this incident and this incident alone? Those are the things that the injury attorney needs to know, and we need to know that sooner rather than later because you're up against a certain timeline in which you can file your lawsuit if necessary and seek compensation as a result of the negligence of someone else. Now, the timeline in West Virginia typically is two years from the date of the accident or the date you knew or should have known that the negligence of someone else caused your injuries. Now, when, when you are injured in an accident, a lot of times you get a response from a potential client and they say, well, I don't really want to sue that person. It was truly an accident. They had a bad day. It was truly an accident. And I would feel bad if I'm suing that person. Well, it may not even get to the point where you're suing that person because up until the time you have to file a lawsuit, you are negotiating with that person's insurance company. And a lot of times you can negotiate a settlement who can compensate you for your injuries and also compensate you for your hours you missed out on work or any other missed opportunities. Now, up until that time, you have to file a lawsuit. Our office speaks with that insurance company and we negotiate back and forth and we get all the medical records from you. We get the medical bills from you. We get anything, what they call specials, which are things that are outside of the bills, things that are outside of the records that touch on something that is unique to you. Let's say you missed out on certain opportunities. Let's say you missed out on certain events. Those are items that the insurance company needs to know to adequately and that analyze your claim to see what compensation you are entitled to. Now, a lot of times the person who was responsible for the injury, their insurance company, their insurance policy isn't significant enough to cover your injuries because your injuries are way more significant than just soft tissue or a sprained ankle or something like bruising. They're a little bit more significant. And that is the point where your insurance, your underinsured coverage could step in and really compensate you based on the insurance that is lacking at that, at that time. Now, in some occasions, you may be partially at fault for your injuries. In that situation, we need to look at all the evidence that's available. We need to look at the police reports. We look at pictures, any video that's available to consider at what percentage you may have been responsible for that injury or that accident. And in that case, that's a situation we have to work out with the insurance company prior to filing suit so we can make sure that the adequate amount is attributable to you and make sure you are still compensated for your injuries. Let's talk a little bit about passengers. Let's say you're a passenger in a car and someone else is at fault for the accident. You are not required to use the same attorney that the driver uses. You're not required to use the same attorney that the other passenger in the car uses. You are entitled to your own 
representation. And it's probably best that you get your own representation because you want to make sure that everyone looks at your injuries in your case objectively, because your injuries in your case is the only thing that matters to you at that time, not the injuries of everyone else in that car, not the injuries of the driver. You need to have an attorney who has your best interests at heart, and it's very advisable that you seek an attorney on your own outside of what the driver and maybe any other passenger in the car has at that time. Let's let's talk about trucking accidents. On many occasions when a truck is involved in an accident and they are at fault or possibly at fault, a lot of things happen at this very quick pace. They are required and sometimes they have a procedure where they call their company and someone wants to talk to you immediately and get your statement and maybe try to resolve something with you very, very quickly. Please don't do that. Make sure you call an attorney immediately and take pictures. You have a full-blown computer and, and a camera in your pocket with your phone. Pull it out, take pictures of the door of the car, of, of the truck, to make sure it has all that information on it. Take pictures of that. Take pictures of the license plate. Take pictures of the truck, the accident, the scene, everything you can think of, take pictures of, because that becomes very, very crucial in your case and how we want to move forward and the compensation you are entitled to, because it will determine who is at fault. And sometimes it may come down to a single picture and a different angle that wasn't available to the officers. Make sure you know every officer's name who was there. So you, if you want to get a report, you can ask for that officer. Document every single detail at that scene if you are able to. If you're not able to, hand the phone to someone else who is able to on your behalf and make sure those pictures are taken. Let's talk a bit about how the person who is responsible for the accident, how they may defend that case. A lot of times they have teams. They have huge law firms. They have huge amounts of lawyers who are working on their behalf to make sure they don't have to pay out a claim. That doesn't scare us. We want to make sure that we are responsible for getting you compensation that you deserve. So we have to hire investigators. If we have to hire people who can recreate the accident, we have to hire anyone who can assist us in that case. We will do if necessary to make sure you get the compensation you deserve. They can have all the attorneys and everything they need. But if that person is at fault, you are entitled to compensation. And that is our job to make sure you get what you deserve. Let's talk to our, our two wheel friends out there on the bikes. When the weather's nice and you're out there riding, you are still an, in danger of possibly being the victim of an accident because a lot of people just don't know how to appreciate and make sure they are driving in a safe manner when other people are on the road on a motorcycle because they don't see you or they claim that you know, you're not supposed to be on this road that I am on. You're entitled to your space on that road. And if you're in an accident, you want to make sure you follow the same protocols. You call if you need medical assistance. You call the officer to make sure a report is made. And you also take a lot of pictures. Take a lot of pictures of everything, license plate. Make sure you take pictures of registration, proof of insurance, of the person also who is driving the vehicle. Because a lot of times people skip that step. It may not be the person who is licensed to drive that vehicle. And all of a sudden they go back, they talk to their insurance company, and you find out that the person driving wasn't the person who was licensed to drive in any state. Their license re was revoked, and that can become an issue. So make sure you call for medical attention, call an officer to make sure a report is made, take your pictures, and make sure you call an attorney. Many times when you're in an accident and you are the person who is the victim of someone else's negligence, the insurance company or the person who was at fault will contact you or their representative will contact you soon after the accident. And they will offer you an amount that may seem significant to you because they want to make sure this gets resolved before attorneys get involved. Because if it gets resolved before attorneys get involved, then now you're prohibited from going after them for anything else that happens. But let's say you have an injury that hasn't really manifested itself within a couple of days. Let's say it's a back injury or a soft tissue injury that really won't manifest itself until later on. And you go to the hospital after you make that settlement with the insurance company, you go to the hospital a week later and all of a sudden your back is getting worse and it's deteriorating over time. And now you're missing work, you're missing opportunities. And you're not able to do the things you typically enjoyed prior to this accident, but you've already resolved the case. That's why the companies and representatives want to settle with you early. When that call comes to say, I want to speak with a lawyer first, hang up the phone. 
Do not give a statement to them about the accident if you are the victim, because they want to lock you into a story and question you to make it seem as if somehow you had some liability that will decrease their liability when it comes out to paying you the compensation you deserve. Make sure you contact an attorney. Please don't fill any calls from the attorneys, representatives, or anyone else, anyone else on behalf of the liable person because they're only trying to lowball you into an offer to make sure because they know you want to just get it over with. They're, they're, they're harping on that. They know a person, they want to put this behind them, get their car fixed, move forward. So they're going to offer you a settlement that may sound good, but it probably is not in your best interest. Most likely it is not in your best interest to settle very, very quickly. Have an attorney look at it, gather all the records, Take the time necessary to look at every single detail before negotiating with that company to make sure you get the compensation you deserve. So how do most accident cases resolve? Most accidents resolve in a settlement. Within that two-year frame, a lot of times you're just settling and negotiate as a result of negotiation with that insurance company. And you reach a settlement that makes sense for you. Now, a lot of times, if it's after that two years, you file a lawsuit. You go into depositions, you're, you're receiving evidence, you're receiving everything you want to know about that case, you're taking depositions, and then all of a sudden you reach a settlement a little bit later. That's fine also. But a lot of times you're not able to reach a settlement either before filing lawsuit or after filing lawsuit. And you just have to go in there, pick the jury and let a jury decide. That's what we're able to do. That's what we're experienced in doing. That's what we're willing to do on your behalf because you are entitled to the compensation as a result of the injury you receive from the negligence of someone else. And that's what you're entitled to. And that's what our firm makes sure you, you, you're able to get. So what type of compensation are you entitled to? A lot of the compensation and settlements or the verdicts, they deal with the pain and suffering that you have received as a result of the accident or the result of the negligence of someone else. Some of the compensation deals with punitive damages, meaning that they want to make sure they that company or that tortfeasor or the person who's responsible, what is an amount that makes sure that they won't do this again? Because it was so egregious, the conduct was so egregious and outrageous that it should be punished at a different level to make sure that this doesn't happen to anyone else. Maybe you're entitled to punitive damages. Maybe you're entitled to compensatory damages because of you the lost wages you've had, because you missed out on work, because you were injured and you weren't able to go to work, or you missed out on opportunities. There are so many different things that go into a verdict or a settlement, and that attorney should be able to explain to you how that settlement breaks down for you and your loved ones. Now, thanks again for listening to episode two of the West Virginia Injury Podcast. In episode three, we're going to continue to talk about personal injury, but now we're going to talk about different types. We're going to be medical malpractice, premises liability, wrongful death, construction accidents, and much more. So make sure you tune in.